everyone, today we are doing your analysis. We're using the Criterion 2 and we are going to run these three specimens. We've already calibrated, we've already run our controls, everything looks good and we're going to get moving on this. So I have three patient specimens here and we're going to just run them and uh, see what type of results we get and then talk about what we should see microscopically with these, okay? And then um, also, hopefully, I'll get to put a microscopic video up for each of them or, you know, all three together. And then that way uh, you can see how all of this goes together. So this is going to be amazing and I'm going to have a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully you will too. All right. So if you notice, I have already remixed all three. So we're looking at color and clarity here. Okay. And before I mixed them, you saw that there was stuff that was settling. In fact, the one on the right, you can still see that stuff is automatically settling right now, which is kind of wild, right? And so when we think about color and clarity, we're thinking about um, the color is going to indicate what kind of things might be in the urine chemically. Um, and, you know, the normal color is, um, is yellow, uh, but if it's a person who is maybe, oh shoot, if it's a person who's maybe diabetic, they might be um, urinating a lot, and so their specific gravity is going to be lower, uh, and their, um, or higher, depending on where they are in the, um, in the disease process, um, but uh, they're going to be urinating a lot, so they're going to have um, uh, a possibly really low um, specific gravity, they'll end up having um, they'll end up having really straw colored urine, uh, which means that it really doesn't have any color, it's colorless, and it'll be clear. Uh, whereas these two guys over here, and I'm honestly, I can't really tell the, the color and clarity. This one looks light yellow, so it's yellow, and it's kind of hazy. There was a couple of things in there, uh, but the labels there are very hard to see, so we can um, see what we see with that. We'll see what the ticker tape says. These two, uh, this one in the middle is turbid. Okay, you cannot see through that. And this one, um, this one has clumps in it. That's gross. <laughs> okay, so uh, we could say that this one uh, is hazy because it's got stuff in it, we can see stuff in it. I think it's just because um, the stuff had settled so long that it's not breaking up. Uh, it might be toilet paper. <laughs> there might be a, a lot of reasons of why it looks like that. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do next is we'll dip the dipsticks, okay, and put them on, and then, um, you know, we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna try to get this all in view for you. Um, and you can watch me do it. So the main thing, you've seen how this runs already in other videos. Um, so uh, it says that the printer's offline, so I'm getting it started, uh, making sure there's a little ticker tape up here. So I press start. All right, now um, this is gonna happen very quickly, okay? And between every single one, I'm gonna try to make sure that I reclose this because it, um, it matters whether you have um, light exposure and also um, you know moisture in this container it can make uh, the reagent dipsticks deteriorate okay so it says um, to get ready so that would be to press start I'm going to take all of these off so that I can, ooh, I can do this rather quickly and I had already remixed all of them so again, this is chemical analysis only. All right, so press start. It says prepare the strip. Okay, I'm gonna dip that one in. You might need to push it down in there just a tiny bit. Okay, goes off on the side, any excess. And this one looks pretty crazy because I had to push it down in there. All right, so hopefully it'll take that one and be good. It says insert it. I already inserted it. Okay, we're going to do the next one. 
dip strip five, so that would be this guy. You also need to remember who it is, is which patient, okay? So if you don't have, if you don't have a barcode reader and you're not scanning them because you can get that for this analyzer, then uh, you'll need to make sure that you've got, um, you've got them lined up in the way that they went. You can also plug it in. Okay, we're gonna go with the next one, dip strip six. Okay, I dunked it all the way in. I'm getting any excess off. It's already printing out that first one that I did. nice so the first one looked really good okay I don't have another strip so I'm just going to let it go Ooh, good stuff I'll wait for the last one okay so the results are in <laughs> the first one the first one this guy is yellow and it doesn't really have a clarity measurement um, but it it looks clear um, the the actual tube is kind of thick, so that makes it look like it's harder to see through. Um, and everything is negative and normal. So if this was a uh, patient that just got a dipstick, the sky would be fine. Uh, specific gravity is in normal physiological range, which is 1.005 to 1.030. Anything else you'd want to check it with a spectrophotometer? This guy, it says yellow. Again, we have to do the clarity um, and specific gravity and everything is good, but protein, there's trace protein. So there might be um, some uh, glomerular damage because there's protein. The dipstick only measures albumin. So there could honestly be a patient that has a protein that's negative, but they have all other kinds of proteins in there um, that aren't albumin and it won't um, it won't see that or detect it and so it would need to go to chemistry um, the actual chemistry bench in the urine sorry not in your analysis but um, you know the main chemistry bench of the lab this one has a isotonic um, specific gravity, which means that the urine is the same specific gravity as the blood, which is crazy. Um, so that means that there isn't, um, that the, the nephron isn't necessarily concentrating the urine. Okay, we have a pH of nine. So as I said earlier with the QC, nine, you're expecting to see some bacteria in this puppy. Okay. Um, we said that it was hazy and it's the one that has that crazy weird stuff you know settling uh so we'll definitely look at this guy under the under the scope um it has leukocyte esterase of 100 which is very high well it says one plus um depending on what your clinical facility says that one says one plus um if you look at the dipstick uh it has a uh, negative trace, one plus and two plus. All right, um, nitrate is negative and protein is 500, holy cow. Definitely some gl glomerular damage there. Glucose of 50, wow, that's also um, not good. You shouldn't have any glucose in there. So this patient's probably a di diabetic patient with um, uh, some glomerular damage and they're not concentrating their urine so they might have nephrotic syndrome um, as noted by the uh, pro protein that's so high the glucose would be from the um, fact that they're diabetic and leukocyte esterase being 100 um, they have an infection and um, 
so we're going to take a look at this. Everything else is negative. If the person was in S, uh, diabetic ketoacidosis, they'd have a positive glucose and a positive ketone, which they don't. So um, this just looks like a chronic issue. Okay, so um, I will get these set up on the uh, microscope and we'll take a look at all of them. All right, um, check me out in the next video and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.